A new report today from the Federal Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity underlines the growing vulnerability of Canadian businesses, governments and individuals because of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's because more of the daily activities of Canadians have moved online during COVID-19. The report warns the number of cyber threat actors is on the rise and they're getting better at stealing money, personal information and intellectual property. And for the first time, China and Russia have been singled out by name as the greatest strategic threats to Canada. Scott Jones is the head of the Cyber Centre and he is with me now. Mr. Jones, good to see you again. Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Thanks for having me. Listen, how has COVID-19 changed the risk and vulnerabilities for Canadians and the opportunities for the cyber criminals? Well, I think there's really three aspects. Number one, we're all working remotely, uh, or most of many of us are working remotely. So it's causing a um, fact is we're outside of the organization's IT security perimeters. Um, and that means that we're seeing uh, more opportunities for the cybercrime actors. But secondly, COVID-19 has been an effective lure. So uh, our, our state of anxiety, uh, our nervousness makes us more susceptible to clicking. To saying that to, to clicking on that link to doing the malicious action that the cyber criminal is looking looking for us to do um, and thirdly it is an attractive target and so earlier this summer we mentioned uh, we talked about Canadian vaccine researchers being targeted right. the fact is this is of interest and so really all of those things are coming together to make COVID-19 um, something that is absolutely impacting the cybersecurity world. So in practical terms, what, what should Canadians be cautious about as some of these cyber criminals try to prey on, as you talked about, prey on some of those worries about COVID-19? Well, I think first of all is search out factual sources of information, go to the root of trust. So if that's your pub local public health agency, for example, rather than what's being tweeted, what's being sent to you, what's being sent over text messaging. I think the second real aspect is we've, we've made tools available that Canadians can use can protect themselves. Uh, so we partnered with the Canadian Internet Registration Authority called CIRA um, to implement something called Canadian Shield. Uh, they, that every Canadian, it's a free service that Canadians can use that will protect them. Um, and we feed them all of the threat information we're generating from our protection of the government of Canada. And that's, a, that's something that we think is really important and it will have a material impact. And, help protect Canadians from cyber crime. And third is the, the, the National Cyber Threat Assessment really does say some of the aspects to look for. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. If there's threatening language, we've all gotten those phone calls saying it's the legal department from a certain government agency. That's simply not how Canadians talk to each mm -hmm. other and not how government interacts with citizens. And so we should be looking for that. You're, you're... Uh, but then furthermore, we've also taken action. We've been working to make sure that we take any um, site. We've been working with partners to take any fraudulent activity offline that, that looks like it's impersonating, for example, the government of Canada. So false sites impersonating the Canadian Public Health Agency, etc. And there's over 4,000 of those that we've done since the beginning of COVID-19. Okay. And you, so, sorry, let me tell you, your, your report also speaks to the, uh, the strategic threat from China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. And I think for the first time you've named names uh, of the state-sponsored actors. Why have you decided this is the time to name those countries? Well, we actually have named uh, previously through things that we, attribution statements. Um, in a lot of cases, we've joined our allies, as we've talked about so far, earlier this summer, we talked about Russia targeting our COVID-19 research with our UK and our US allies. Um, previously though, we have called out China, for example, in the National Research Council where Canada stood um, because it was our organizations being targeted. I think one of the things that we're, we're saying is we're, we're putting this in because they are the threats. They're the threats that we've mentioned publicly before and we're putting them in the report and saying these are the strategic threats. But they're not the only threats. And they're also not the threat that most Canadians are going to face. Okay. Uh, that is cyber. Fair enough. Your, your report also warns that the state-sponsored actors are likely developing cyber capabilities to disrupt Canadian infrastructure. Uh, what are they targeting? And, and uh, why has infrastructure become more vulnerable? Well, we noted, uh, we noted in the report that absence international hostilities, it was very unlikely that... Um, uh, that any sort of activity would be targeting Canadian critical infrastructure, but that doesn't mean that they're not preparing. So we see them looking for things like uh, reconnaissance, finding out where the vulnerabilities are and why they're more vulnerable is because technology is converging. Typically critical infrastructure worked independently of the internet. It was on a separate network. It was managed independently and isolated. But because of the complexity that we're facing in, say, in the cybersecurity world and in the IT world, these are being brought together. It's in the report we call it the convergence of operational technology and internet technology. That's right, and give me a, and, give me a sense. You talk about some of, some of this uh, these activities being converted. 
uh, to uh, to uh, digital platforms and so on. So, what specifically might you know might be under threat here? What what would foreign countries be uh, looking at trying to disrupt, and why? So we've seen um, there are there are some examples in the report where we talk about things like um, uh, the Ukrainian power grid was targeted um, during during. Um, for this type of disruptive activity uh, because of the situation they found themselves in. So what we're, what we're seeing is as this operational technology is brought online, you can use it to shut down, a, turn o open a circuit break or to stop electricity from flowing if if you took it to an extreme. Um, you can see that it, would, it could turn open dams um, or shut down dams or very various different pieces as these things are being brought online. And so what we're saying is let's prepare now mm. This is, this is not to scare people and it's not to say it's going to happen tomorrow. It's now's the time for us to get ready. Now's the time to prepare and make sure that we won't um, be victim to this in the future. What is happening with commercial espionage during the pandemic in particular? Are, are Canadian companies, uh, governments, institutions being targeted uh, by some of these state-sponsored actors? Uh, we certainly see uh, a certain amount of targeting from state actors. We talked about the pandemic um, and the vaccine research earlier. Um, but that's one of those things where we always have to be careful of what is our crown, what are our crown jewels, what are the things that make us special as an organization, or where we have unique information. And we always tell organizations the first thing to do is think about what you need to protect. Uh, for some organization, that is who your customers are and what you're doing. Others, it is intellectual, intellectual property, something that makes you unique in the world, that gives you a unique marketing advantage. Um, and for others, it will be that private information that they hold on all of us. But knowing what that is, knows what you, then you know what you have to protect. All right, so. Um, you touched on a little bit earlier. So, what what is the biggest threat that it, an, an individual Canadian faces, and what do you do about it? Without a doubt, it's cybercrime. Uh, that's something that is targeting every single one of us every day. Uh, whether it's those fraudulent phone calls we get, but most often it's those emails uh, that are hoping to get us to click on something, something where we're seeing ourselves being impersonated, uh, reusing things like our passwords, and so. This is something where simple actions can make a huge difference. So doing a quick update, making sure that your systems are up to date, applying those software updates when they come in, for example. Using something like a Canadian Shield lets you uh, take action and protect yourself. Uh, and it means even if you click, it's not going to have those catastrophic impacts. And so a few simple actions can make a world of difference when we're looking at cybercrime. All right. And that goes for businesses and individuals. All right, Scott Jones from the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity. Uh, thanks for your perspective tonight. Good to talk to you. We'll talk again. Thank you so much.